Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about spaghetti code. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, my projects always evolve into spaghetti code and tightly coupled classes. How do I become better at writing clean and maintainable code? Experience, I would say. And unfortunately, this is uh, this is really, really, really tricky. Uh, even for, I would even go as far as to say that I know senior software developers who've been working for years that are still fairly poor, fairly bad at this thing. This is a very complicated topic, and it requires a special size type of mindset to do this well. Uh, there is a very, very, very nice. Um, well, quote. I'm. I'm not. I'm. I'm paraphrasing here, but uh, there was a developer who once said that complex uh, um, simplicity is extremely complex, and I think it it's beautifully put because it really is a really big hassle to create something that feels simple, especially when it is as complicated as it is. Uh, I think that the for me at the very least, I think the the best example possible of how this rule has been applied or how, how when this has gone really right would be uh, jQuery, uh, the JavaScript library jQuery. I think that they have truly captured uh, because like the, the you have to understand the complexity of the problem that they were solving back when like, I mean it's still going around that it's still around today. But when it was designed, it was. Uh, it's pure genius. Honestly, it was pure genius. They managed to create a very nice, simple to use interface on top of something that was a mesh of problems, which was during the browser wars and all of this good stuff, right? Uh, and there are other examples of um, people developing tools that are really, really clean and nice, but it is really, really complicated. So I can only really hear, I can only give you a few very high level tips because honest to God, if I were to try to teach you how to, at least from of course my perspective, how to write clean and maintainable code, it's uh, it, it's similar to you asking asking me, Frederick, how, how, do I, how do I become an experienced software developer? It's not an answer that I can give you in one video. It's not an answer I can give you in two videos. It is just, it's the accumulation of years of experience and practice and tips and tricks that you pick up from other developers. That's how I learned it. That's how everybody else learns it. And I can give you my tips, but you have to understand that my tips are not, they're not going to magically make you do this right. Uh, just as you, you, you won't get all of the truth on how to solve this problem from, from just talking to a few people. You have to kind of, you have to give yourself some time to mature as a software developer. You should learn the tips because a lot of the tips that you will find on clean coding practices and so forth, they are really, really good. Not all of them are going to be perfect, but once you know those uh, tools and you start just playing around with them, think of yourself as, as a kid learning how to how to ride a bicycle or whatever. You have to be a little bit wobbly in the beginning and just keep at it until you in cycle without problems. It's the same thing here. You just have to continuously learn from people who are more experienced than you and try to figure out, okay, so they do it this way and what are the pros and the cons and then reflect on like pros and cons. What, 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 what's good and what's bad about this? So I'll give you a few small tips. First and foremost, when it comes to writing clean and maintainable code, my number one rule in every situation is <clears throat> to write disposable code, as I like to call it. What I mean by disposable code is that anything that you write should be as uh, as isolated as humanly possible, as loosely coupled from everything else as humanly possible. Because one thing that is a constant in every single code base is code always changes. And so when you understand that code always changes, the first and foremost thing for you should be to think in terms of how can I make sure that if I have three pieces of code that I can change each piece without having to change all the other pieces at the same time? And I've found that the easiest way to do that, the most easy beginner tr trick I know, is to centralize 
think in terms of centralization uh, when you, of code rather than semantics. What I mean by that is that instead of creating the class, because usually what people do when, if let's say for the sake of argument, we're talking about the MVC pattern, what every single person who has just learned the MVC pattern will do is that they will create a, three directories, model, view, and controller directories. And then they will start splitting out their domain models and their, their domain logic over all of these three. So they will put the user model in the models directory, the user pages or whatever in the view, view directory, and then the user controller, of course, in the controller directory. I tell you, don't do that. Think in terms of libraries instead. In other words, do not create an MVC, like the, the hierarchy of MVC in terms of folders, because the thing is, just bec the the folders uh, is not the thing that does that makes something MVC. It's just how you that's how just how you place your code. Take all the user related logic, everything that is related to the user model itself, put that in a library, put it in the user library. The reason why you should do this is because now you're centralizing all the code. Everything that is coupled now lives in that single module. And if you think about that, that is actually how you are con yourself. You're consuming all of the third party packages that you use in your project. Every single person who distributes it, who works in open source and pr publishes as a package works in this fashion. They don't force you, usually at the very least, to d download a bunch of code from different places. They all they put it together and create a nice little library that you can depend on and that where everything that you need exists that is related to that library. And you should write your code the same way. Because when you start doing that, it becomes very easy for you to comprehend what is owned by this piece, this piece of the library. It also makes it extremely easy to split out into microservices. If you have all your user logic in a user package, well, all you really need to do is to slap a network interface on that and put that in a server, and all of a sudden you have microservices, or you, you can create, that, create a service out of that thing when the project grows. But honestly, if you, if you get really good at this modularization thinking, the, the scale that you can get a monolith up to is enormous. I've found more often than not that the reason why the monolithic application structure doesn't really scale all that well, it has more to do with that people don't really adhere to this rule. They are they're spreading their logic all across the entire project and that creates a lot of confusion and uh, you, you, you have problems with code discovery which is a big problem in a, in, when you have a large s systems where you've you re-implement things in multiple places, so you have different versions of things in different places because the code base is simply that big. And when you start thinking in terms of these tiny modules, well, another thing that I've found that to be really nice is that when the project grows even further and you have more people joining in and you talk about code ownership, well, the next thing for you is to all right, then uh, is to discuss okay, who owns what packages or who owns w what modules. And then you can put those pa those modules or those libraries, packages, call them whatever you want, right, into a team directory. You can even scale it, as I, sa I said, like this, it, it's ju it just, it's a structure that keeps on working regardless of how big your system gets. It c it's as long as you are really good at grouping the libraries into specific folders and packages, it will, it, it can grow to any size. It really does. It, 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 you, you think about it in my in a silly way. It's kind of like you're thinking about CSS and the um, uh, and the uh, the uh, the DOM model. No, it, what was it called? The uh, uh, the visual model in CSS, where like you you're basically just dealing with a box. You, it's a box inside of a box inside of a box. It's the same thing with. Uh, with these packages, you don't have to uh, think about that all that much. You just have to identify, okay, this is my domain model for a user, this is my domain model for a product, for an order, for whatever, and simply put those things in a directory. That's all you really have to know about. And you automatically create a situation where you know now that nothing that the user is doing should exist within the order module or vice versa. And if they need to talk to each other or they depend on each other, you need to have interfaces between them or you need to have services or expose logic where you take in the user model into the order, mo uh, uh, order function or whatever. You don't group them. 
you don't create a situation where you tangle them together because they are completely separate things and should live in their own packages. So what I want you to take away from this is that there's no universal way to figure out how to write uh, software that does not turn into spaghetti code. The, and you should understand that it takes a while before you get good at this stuff. It's really, uh, it really comes down to practice and experience and learning from people who, are, who have tips to give away. My tip to you, if I can only give you one, is to modularize all the things. Put everything into a module and keep these modules clean. Usually it's a very good thing to modularize things based on domain entities, so users, products, orders, payments, whatever, like it doesn't really matter. And then treat everything as a package. Treat it just as if you, as an open source package, even if it's in your own code base. Centralize everything in, their sa in the same module and the rule is very simple. Everything that related to that specific entity or that concept exists within that module. And if you realize that you need higher levels of abstraction, maybe at the team level or something like that, where you have things that are very coupled, put them together. Just add another layer and have base modules that then go into a higher package and then that can go even you know, into a higher package. This is probably the, the easiest way for you to write very disposable code where it's easy to change one thing without having to understand all the other things and affecting everything else and it is probably one of the easiest ways to create, create the loosest coupling and these two things are key in my opinion at the very least in order to create sustainable software that is easy to change. Have a great day!